All right, so I still play D&D, and I still love it. But a few years ago, something very strange happened. I was playing computer games, Command and Conquer, World of War, I mean, not World of Warcraft, Warcraft 1, <laughs> Warcraft 2. Uh, my friends started playing this game called Ultima. And they said, you got to try this. You're going to love it. you got to try it. And I tried it, and I couldn't get into it. And I couldn't get into it, nothing against the game, but all I had was that third-person view. So I didn't feel like I was ro role playing. At that time, I, it's funny because now I use a third person view when I play. But at that time, I really needed a first person view, and there wasn't any. It was that simple. So they noticed I was playing less and less. I only played a few times, really did not get into it. Kind of stepped away and said, maybe I'm just getting too old for this stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, then they said to me, oh, Bob, um, you really need to come play this game. They were in beta for this brand new game coming out. He said, you really, when this launches, you need to play this game. It was EverQuest. And I remember logging into EverQuest. First time, went through the character creation screen. They said, play something easy, play a warrior, because you, you're, not, you're not a big gamer, at, and a computer gamer. Play a warrior, you'll get it, you'll pick it up quick. So I set this barbarian warrior, which really made them crazy, because if you remember EverQuest, that means I started in Hallis. Well, the other two guys who were playing were starting in Freeport. Now, this is EverQuest when it first came out. There's no books you can tap and go to the plane of knowledge. There's very few people even at the level where they can teleport. You are now, if you want to get somewhere in EverQuest, you've got to run. Well, my two friends who had been playing, one had a shaman, one had a cleric. And so they're like, you actually started the character in Hellas. All right, we'll come get him. Start one in Freeport. No, no, I really like him. He's Balexis from my first book that I wrote, uh, Echoes of the Fourth Magic. I'm playing my character. He has to be a barbarian. Come get me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so Jim and Jim, or Bolin and Barjan, <laughs> the, the cleric and shaman, Barjan shows up in Hellas. And he says, before we go, I've got to make you some armor. And he starts sewing some patchwork armor for me. And he gives me a hat and a tunic. And I put on this hat, and it looks like this bear's head. And every time I run, this bear, inside of a bear's head, comes down in front of my face. And it's very <laughs> bizarre. So we go out into this. We, I go, I, I'm trying to figure out the place. I'm walking around. I'm talking to these NPCs. I jump in the lake. I'm drowning. I call up Jim frantically, help, help, help. He finally te teaches me how to swim up. <laughs> so we go into Everfrost and we meet the cleric there and he types in so him and I'm like well that should be with an E and he already made me no so him Ooh, huh spirit of the wolf you'll run faster just keep running that's all I heard for the next two hours of my life was just keep running I felt like that fish in Nemo you know <laughs> just keep running so we take off and we're running through Everfrost Peaks, and then into this place called Blackboro, and they're saying, just keep running. You, just keep running. Don't stop. Don't stop. Meanwhile, they're slaughtering everything in front of me, so I don't understand why they're going so crazy. We come out. We get into um, Kinos Hills. We go running along the wall of Kinos Hills and go into Karana, West Karana. And they run along the hill to this river. And then we're running along this river. And then we're running along this river. And then we're running along this river. And an hour has passed. And we're running along this river. And they're get, they're, all they're doing is grumbling because they've made this run before. I've never seen anything like this. The whole time, all I'm thinking of is, I could write books here. <laughs> this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Well, we get to North Karana. And I hear them talking. I don't think he can outrun a Highland Lion. <laughs> We're going to have to start in Hallis again. Damn it, Bob, why didn't you start a character in Freeport? We're going to lose the whole night. On and on and on, and I'm sitting there, huh? <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking about. And we're running, and we're running. We get to East Karana, and there's this, hey, look, that's a cool Cyclops. Don't go near him. <laughs> why? Just keep running. <laughs> and now there's these spiders, and I hate spiders, and they're bigger than me, and they're all chasing me. And we're coming down this long tunnel to the Gorge of King Zorb. And we're, I, I managed to turn around. And they're like, don't stop. Just keep running. And I see this 
like 400 monsters chasing us. <laughs> I'm like, oh, just keep running. <laughs> so here I go, tearing down this gorge. Boom, I come into this place, the Gorge of King Zorb. And I go, oh, this is kind of cool. You know, you're looking up at the, wow, this is really kind of cool. <laughs> so we go running through the Gorge of King Zorb. And the guy in front, Bolin the cleric, types in, oh, no. And I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm typing back, why, what's the problem? I'm running. I got about halfway through it, my screen goes black. <laughs> Just black. No chat box, no, I'm hitting key. Nothing's happening. Well, like any normal person who's using AOL dial-up <laughs> in 1998 or whatever the heck it was, what would you do? You'd reboot. <laughs> Shut off the computer. Phone rings. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I said, my computer froze. Bob, they're mud men. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're mud men. They hit you with mud and your screen goes black. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Am I still running? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're against the wall. <laughs> I'll let you know when you they're fighting everything. <laughs> I log back in, and I'm way up on this wall looking down at them, and there's like 700 dead monsters around them. <laughs> Don't stop running. <laughs> we go through Runny Eye into Misty Thicket. We cross Misty Thicket, and I'm like, this place is cool. And there's music playing now. This is a music zone. We go into Rivervale, and I'm like, I want to live here. I'm, and I'm looking, they, they're, come on, we gotta hurry. We gotta get there before seven o'clock. It's after nine, you idiots, you know? <laughs> no, no, we gotta be there before seven o'clock. And I'm like, it's after nine, just keep running. <laughs> Finally find my way in after a million wrong turns and I enter a place called Kithakor. You got to be there before seven o'clock, game time. Because at 7 o'clock, Kithakor, which is a perfectly lovely zone, turns into hell. <laughs> <laughs> and so now here these poor 13th level characters are standing there with a first level dumbass barbarian in Kithakor after 7 o'clock. <laughs> we can make it. <laughs> DJ and Tommy are waiting. We'll make it. <laughs> so they re sew me. Just run. <laughs> We're up along the wall. I'm on auto follow. I looked away for a minute. I look back and I'm, I'm running into a tree. <laughs> you are no longer auto following Bolin. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> just run. <laughs> Scariest 10 minutes of my life and I never saw a monster. <laughs> How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? I'm in this zone. I never got threatened by anything. I never saw one of these huge undead that come out or anything. And I'm sweating. I'm terrified. How cool is that? I made it. Yay, I made it. <laughs> and that's when I knew in playing this game that the world had just changed. Not just my world, but the world. Because I, you know, working for publishers, they're always looking for new licenses. They want to be the next Forgotten Realms, the next Star Wars, right? They want that for a book line. And I had just found a place, and I called and begged publishers, you've got to do books in this world. You've got to do books in this world. This is a place of inspiration. But I knew the world had changed. And I've spent the last few years trying to figure out where do I fit in? Where do the authors fit into this? Well, about a month and a half ago, I'm sitting at home doing an e-signing. Through my website, we do these things called e-signings. We got one now. If you want a signed book, whenever I have a new book come out, my webmaster will act as a bookstore. And he'll take orders. And you can put in, you know, per, you know say happy birthday to Frank or something. 
And then he shows up at my house with his van full of books, and we sit there for a few hours and sign all the books, and he mails them out. And it's great because he's got, you know, he's got young kids. It's a great way for him to make a little extra cash. And I have fun. And that's my whole life is all about just having fun. I'm sorry, but the rest of it's just baloney, and I don't care. This is a lark to me. I don't take this seriously at all, any of it. This is for fun. And I have fun doing e-signing, so I do them. Well, I'm at home doing an e-signing, and the phone rings. I pick up the phone. The guy says, can I talk to Bob Salvatore, please? And I said, speaking. He says, oh, man, this is such an honor. I am a huge fan. I have read all your books twice. This is Kurt Schilling. I'm like, you didn't just say that. <laughs> now, for those of you who aren't baseball fans, I'm an, I am a long-suffering Red Sox fan. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Thanks to a bloody sock and, among other people, Kurt Schilling. He's a future Hall of Fame baseball pitcher. He called me. <laughs> This is bizarre. <laughs> and he asked me, I want you to be the creative director. I'm starting a game company, and I want you to be the creative director for my first product. This is what I've been waiting for. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. I've been, I've been hoping something like this would happen, and it fell right into my lap. How lucky am I again? Thanks, Ed, or Gary, or whoever. Because here's the thing I know. And the first thing, of course, as soon as this got out on the internet, <laughs> here it comes. Good and bad, right? Here it comes. What'd you get him for? He's a hack. <laughs> oh, he's my favorite author. I can't wait. He's going to write such a great story. And both sides are missing it. Because the beauty of the MMO, the beauty of it, I'm not going to write a great story. What I'm hoping to do is give you guys a place to write your own darn stories. You're the authors in an MMO. Mythic, they're not, the, they're not the authors of Dark Age of Camelot. They're the creators of a world where you're the authors. That's why you love it. If they had a game where their story, it's like running a Dungeons and Dragons game. People ask me, how do you run your campaigns? Loosely. <laughs> if you're pigeonholing people down this path that you think is really cool, they'll walk away. That's not what a mass morgue is. That's why I love them. The first thing I wanted to do when I, took, when I edited the EverQuest book line, and it never happened for the same reason so many things never happened that I won't go into here because it's a good day. Um, <laughs> I wanted to do anthologies of fanfic stories. I wanted to get people in the game who were writing about their characters, because that's what makes a mass morgue work. And so now the challenge for me is to find out where do I fit in? As a creative director, what tools can I help put in this that's going to make it fun? Because look, it doesn't matter if it's Kurt Schilling and Todd McFarlane and R.A. Salvatore. It doesn't matter. That, none of that matters. In the final analysis, all that's going to matter is I having fun. Right? I having fun. That's why you pay. That's why you play. And I can't wait. I can't wait. And we're just getting it going. And it's funny because here I am starting in this new game company that's just starting up, and I'm out here at the competition. <laughs> but see, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way at all. I have friends at Sony, I got friends at Blizzard, now I've got friends at Mythic. That's not the way fantasy works, and that's not the way fantasy should ever work. There's enough room for everybody to just go out there and find what gives them the most fun. How much time do I have? Are we about done? <laughs> I don't know if I can open it up to questions or not. Ah, you guys don't want to play. <laughs> you want to sit there and listen to this guy drone on. No. Um, so anyway, I knew back when I played EverQuest that the world had changed. And what I'm really hoping to do as I go into this, and I, I'm sure it's the same thing they're all hoping, is I really want you to have a wubba wubba moment. <laughs> 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 
Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, then I will open it for questions if anybody's got any. And you can just feel free to ask me. I'll be around all day. You got books you want signed, I'm doing a signing. Otherwise, just come up and have me sign them. I'm around all day just hanging out and looking at really cool video over there. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, though, is, is how amazed I am by the communities that have developed in these games. My sons, this summer, didn't come out to Gen Con with me. They went to a gathering of their guild in Michigan. One of my first experiences playing EverQuest, I, I went to the monk class. I had my monk, and I was out on Orc Highway, <laughs> my favorite place in the world, Orc Highway. I met a druid named Acorn, and she was really cool. And her father, Coyote, was there. And I got to know these people. And I would log on, and they were there. And we'd show, then later on, I saw them over at the Rook City, I mean the um, Aviac City in the Karanas. Hey, Acorn. Hey, Marcello. And we were hanging out again, and I got to know him. And Coyote was, was her father, and her son was playing as well. And it was great because they didn't live near each other. But this was a way for him to get to know his grandfather, who was very ill, and who actually passed away a year later. And it was just such an amazing experience because, indeed, the world has changed. I think for the better. And I always love these TV shows where they have some psychiatrist on talking about, we must cure your son. He's playing computer games. <laughs> we must stop him from playing four hours of computer games a day so that he'll start watching television for six hours a day. <laughs> we must stop him from playing four hours of computer games a day so he can go out to the ball field and be abused by some jackass who didn't make the major leagues just like the rest of the other kids, damn it. What's that all about? This is virtual. No, it's not. This is real. This is fun. This is enrichment. This is friendship. This is the new medium. This is the new art. And I am so thrilled to be part of it. So thank you for inviting me out here today. Thank you for creating the best communities on the planet as far as I'm concerned. And the rest of the world can go to hell because they don't know what they're doing anyway.